Hello and thanks for tuning in to this introduction on API mocking and service virtualization. So if I was to have one takeaway for you today, it'd be that it's easy to get started with service virtualization and API mocking, and it's going to eliminate a number of critical problems and frustrations you have on day-to-day -day basis. So this is just one thing you take away from today, let it be this place. And I wanted to start with some key definitions. So when I say front-end, I mean a system that's used by the users, for example, a web application. A back-end, I mean a system that's serving the data or it's a mainframe that does some background processing. When I say a third-party system, I mean a system or service that is accessible from a, an external company. And when I say an API, I mean an application programming interface, which is a definition of how systems communicate with each other. Okay. So what is service virtualization? Service virtualization and API mocking uh, helps you simulate backend or third-party services. It will allow you to test your systems without having to rely on those real services. It allows you to test hypothetical or hard to test situations, allows you to test more test scenarios with less effort. And those simulators are called virtual services. Okay, so how does that look like? On the left hand side, we see a testing infrastructure without service virtualization. On the right hand side, we can see a testing infrastructure with service virtualization. In this case, we're using traffic parallel R2 as an example. Uh, but this applies to general service virtualization concepts as well. So on the left-hand side, we've got the system under test where we're testing our application, which is connecting to transaction systems like payments, international payments <clears throat> and statements. We've, we've also got this uh, user data systems and third-party analytics systems. And all of these systems, data is consumed by our web application, which we're testing. On the right-hand side, we use simulators or virtual services of those transactions, user data or third party systems uh, to allow ourselves to test our system under test in isolation. OK, so that's the main difference here in the architecture, testing architecture, when you're implementing service virtualization and API mocking. And you've already noticed me using these names interchangeably. So the bottom line here is that it's about testing applications in isolation. And you're going to use you're going to hear people use several names like service virtualization. Typically, it's associated with. Um, a bit all the tools typically for traditional monolithic architectures there's open source tools that use names like api mocking simulating apis those are the next generation service virtualization tools and there's going to be other tools that use names like over the wire test doubles http mocks http stabs ibm mq system simulators etc but again the bottom line here is that it's about testing applications in isolation so what is service virtualization and api mocking um, well, we've talked about it a minute ago. And why would you do it? Um, you do it to reduce costs. You do it to shift left and accelerate, accelerate delivery. So it allows you to, for your teams to work in parallel because you don't have to rely on other teams' schedules. You're using those simulators of those other teams' services and allows you to find defects early. So you're shifting left and accelerating delivery. Since you're simulating those dependencies, it allows you to reduce infrastructure costs. For example, you don't have to have uh, new environments per team. You just use those simulators and those in test environments sometimes can be costly to create. And um, there's less test data management than manually because uh, you're using those simulators or virtual services. It's easier to automate your testing sooner because um, there's less effort involved in actually setting up those simulators from your tests than setting up the real system test data and having to deal with all the connectivity issues and availability on those systems. So you're automating your test suites much sooner if you're using this technique. Uh, you can cut down your test transaction costs and you can essentially, the bottom line here is it be more nimble or agile because you're decoupled You've decoupled yourself from other teams, other team schedules and other systems and the issues with those systems. And you can test your bit in isolation before you start integrating with the other ones. And you know your thing is working um, in isolation and then you can work on some integration and find potential issues there. But at least you know your thing was working according to your specs. 
Okay, so what are the benefits of service virtualization and API mocking? It's going to allow you to, like, if you're a tester or developer, you, you might see these things once you start implementing the, the, the service virtualization and API mocking. It will allow you to unblock your, if you're a tester or developer waiting for API. So let's say you want to test your applications waiting for an API from another team. If you use that virtual service API mock, uh, you can test against it. You don't have to wait for that API. Um, it's easier and faster to reproduce production bugs because uh, you can set up those simulators in a way uh, that it can be sometimes hard to set up in like big QA or SIT environments. Um, setting up test data is much easier. Um, element, it eliminates the need for scheduling time on environments. Um, you can reduce third party transaction costs. You can make your performance tests more real, reliable and automate builds faster. And we'll talk about these in detail in a minute. An important thing that um, needs to be covered here uh, to start with also is that you can create those virtual services in different ways and that's going to depend on the tool you use. But typically you'll see ways of creating those virtual services like uh, recording traffic, reading them manually from documentation, so like copying and pasting sample requests and responses from documentation of the services or APIs, importing data from production or SIT or QA logs, and generating from schemas like OpenAPI, Swagger, Wisdo, Protobuf, etc. So I wanted to cover here quickly, based on a traffic powered example, how you could record traffic. So we got a tester here that's testing a finance application that's connecting to a market data API. So in order to simulate this market data API, we can record the traffic by putting traffic powered in this case in the middle, a service virtualization and API mocking tool. And it's gonna, while we run our tests, it's gonna record the traffic, and then we can put it into replay mode. So we're not relying on that market data API anymore, and we're testing a finance application in isolation. And we can also then, uh, using the web user interface in traffic pilot or programmatic APIs, uh, we can change those recordings uh, to suit our testing needs, add more error cases, etc. So we're really thoroughly testing our finance application here without having to deal with that third party market data API. In order to put this all into context of the digital transformations that are happening recently, especially with large organizations uh, that want to release to customers their features much faster and much more frequently. Um, I've borrowed some diagrams here um, for, from Paul Hammond and he's got these really great diagrams that talk about how what he has observed when it comes to release schedules. So you see here uh, you got releases every 100 days, every 10 days, daily releases, etc. And on the right side, right hand side we see similar uh, diagram, just different things uh, being discussed here. So on the right side, we're looking at the deployment side, on the left side at the branching and QA side. So where does API mocking and service virtualization fit into this um, digital tr transformation landscape? Well, um, on the left hand side, you'll see that in order to do Q autom QA automation or quality assurance automation, uh, which uh, is important to note, it's not only done by testers or QAs, it's quality assurance as a company, Every do, everybody's doing it here together. That's where you see API mocking and service virtualization fitting in, in your automated functional test and speedy and thorough functional tests. And then on the right hand side, uh, what Pose noticed was that if we wanna do um, fast releases, as fast as let's say one release every uh, 10 days, one release every 30 days, um, you need production-like environments that can be set up uh, through version control scripts. You can have production-like environments that you can just set up using scripts uh, somewhere and uh, replicate um, some issues that you've seen in production and test your, um, let's say, rate, latest release candidate there. So in order to be able to do that, you'll need API mocking and service virtualization if you're working in environments where you're connecting to third parties, for example, or you're connecting to old mainframe systems or core banking systems, etc. Because typically you can't uh, script those systems, right? So you can't suddenly run them locally or in your CI CD pipelines. So you need those simulators to decouple yourself from those systems. Okay, so this is where we see 
API mocking and service virtualization fitting in onto these digital transformation projects that want to improve the release schedule uh, or release fre frequency for organizations. What can you do with service virtualization? Just reiterating what we've said. So you can test your systems without relying on dependent components and you can set up the test data in those simulators without having to talk to third party or other teams in your organization. Um, it's gonna allow you to simulate API error messages, protocol specific errors, and slow responses, for example, for performance testing. Let's say you're using, um, you, you see performance of this specific API is that it takes 30, 30, 300 milliseconds to respond in production, but the test environments are quite slow and it takes like three seconds to respond to test environments. So you can't actually run your test of your system that consume those APIs in your test environments because um, the responses you get are every three seconds, so it's not production-like. So you can use the simulators to simulate the API, uh, return those responses every 300 milliseconds instead of three seconds. And that means you can test your project, your system or microservice in a way, in a production-like environment where the, those dependent components respond in 300 milliseconds, not three seconds. Okay, so as a development and testing team, uh, you'll see several items that we've already talked about. And I wanted to expand a bit on those, uh, like how would, uh, which of, uh, the, the things that you could see on day-to-day -day basis could service virtualization and API mocking help you with. So first of all, um, creating the test data is complex and takes time. So it's slowing you down. You have to wait for a team to set up your test data, for example, because they're copying it from production. And there's some impossible test data to set up. There's no users like that in production that you can copy or the third-party system. Uh, they don't offer in their test environment certain types of users registered so you can't actually test some of your features because they're relying on test data that doesn't exist <clears throat> also um, it's we've often seen with our customers that it's hard to set up some types of error messages and this all goes away the minute you start using service virtualization or api mocking what we see is more and more teams want to run your the tests on demand frequently enough and test earlier than a life cycle. So they want to test things locally on the laptop or uh, VM, or they want to test things in their CI CD pipelines and builds. But if you're relying on those third party components or backend components, um, the configuration to enable those local tests or the CI CD tests can get quite costly. So you can just simulate those services and there you go, you're running locally or in CI CD uh, without having to rely on those backend or third party systems. Um, we we'll see teams that have issues with hard to reproduce uh, bugs, production issues. And the main reason for that <clears throat> typically is that there's complex interactions between multiple systems and the test data set up in your test environment could be quite hard and time consuming to set up those specific uh, con const specific uh, switches or uh, parameters for a given user to be able to replicate that issue in a test environment, especially when error messages involve, are involved in some of those transactions. So what you do is use simulators and uh, you can set it up even locally on your CI CD and automated builds. Okay. Um, also, in large banks, we often see that uh, there's old mainframes with limited number of test environments <clears throat> uh, where you're burning through test data quite often. But what you do there, well, you have to schedule time on those 10 environments, uh, on those test environments, and it's resulting in an efficient use of your time. You'd like to be testing more often and get that feedback on the changes that you've made much sooner. Simulate, and then you're getting that feedback much sooner. Again, locally or in your CI CD pipelines. Uh, quick uh, low hanging fruits for some organizations is, um, especially in performance testing, is mocking out third party calls that are costly. For example, let's say a thousand calls to a third party AP, a test API costs you $1. Uh, if you want to test a thousand transactions per second uh, every day during a four hour low test run that means you're going to stack up some money every test to that you have to pay to the third party for essentially the very same uh, simple calls that are um, typically in those performance tests those calls are quite simple so and here you just 
uh, simulate that. Um, again, those calls are typically quite simple. To uh, so all the services are quite simple, so it's easy to virtualize them and reduce costs immediately. And next to that, what we also see is some teams have issues with unreliable performance tests. So you run your performance test suite and it comes back with unexpected performance issues, uh, a divergence from the baseline that was set with previous releases. And since there's many components being tested at the same time, you don't know major changes introduced in this new release. You don't know where is the issue coming from. So it's hard to pinpoint the cause of the performance issue. So if you use simulator and split those uh, performance tests into a few bits, and instead of testing, let's say, five systems or 100 microservices at the same time, which is a handful of microservices at the same time or one microservice at the same time, or you know one or two big systems at the same time instead of five or six of them and uh, then it's easier to reproduce um, figure out, pinpoint where the issue is especially when you test those systems in isolation the ones that are changing the most frequently so typically let's say you've got 100 microservices and a handful of them or you know a dozen of them is going to be changing quite frequently and the rest are going to be more or less stable so what we can do is just change, test those in a separate performance suite of tests and uh, that way you know you have a safe net there that the performance is as you as expected according to the baseline that was set with the previous releases of those microservices so that's pretty much it a very quick high level overview of what service virtualization can do to you and api mocking and again uh, the takeaway i wanted for you here today is that um, we've seen that it's easy to get started with our customers and uh, for our customers and it solves critical problems that developers and testers face on day-to-day -day basis okay if you wanted to continue learning more about this we offer workshops where you follow what we're doing during the, during the workshop. It's a four hour workshop where you join us on a remote session. We accept up to 10 attendees at the time from your company. And we're gonna be going through a step-by-step -step workshop where I or somebody from our team will be doing service virtualization for HTTP, Soul, Prest, JMS, IBM, MQ, Rabbit, MQ, MQP, etc., etc. And um, you can repeat those steps yourself and see how easy it is to do hands-on service virtualization and API mocking. So if that's something you're interested in, please go ahead to trafficpower.com to the contact form or just email us at traffic, contact at trafficpower.com. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, leave a like below, please, and subscribe and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.